You are tuned Black in Talk to Radio. Black Talk Radio News. Of course, my name is Scotty Reed. I'm the host of the program, the news and current events program, Black Talk Radio News. But I'm also the uh, creator and founder of the independent black media platform, Black Talk Radio Network. Um, definitely, we need to support independent black media, especially when we're behind the enemy lines of USA Inc. Uh, on this topic of reparations, um, I was like, you know, the media, let me check my YouTube stream, let me do a few searches and what have you and see what's the latest news on reparations. And some news has come out over the past week about reparations, but just not here in the United States. Now, if I have time, I probably will pull up and uh, let me just say, um, Y'all probably gonna hear some cars and vehicles going up and down the road. Uh, I'm trying to enjoy uh, this pleasant weather here in North Carolina while I still can. And this is an informal, you know, um, um, an informal broadcast where we're just asking people to come up and um, express their opinion on reparations. And when I'm talking about reparations for the purpose of this uh, broadcast, I'm talking about United States of America Incorporated. That's the main corporation uh, that has profited from not only slavery, but stolen property during Jim Crow, uh, the continued enslavement. I mean, they should give me reparations just for the trauma they caused when I found out somewhere about 2011, 2012, that they actually did not abolish slavery which led to the founding of New Abolitionist Radio. Although we don't do that live broadcast and haven't done it in a few years, that podcast is still extensive. And it led to activists in different states changing their state constitutions. I should get reparations just for the trauma that was inflicted on my brain and realizing, man, these, these teachers and what have you been lying to me my entire life. And not to attack teachers, but they all went through the same educational so-called institutions and they were lied to about the history. But it's some of these people that knew. They knew and they, they continue to conspire to hide this fact from the American people to make us think that uh, slavery has been abolished. I mean, technically, we still have chattel slavery in the black community. We like to make the distinction in the abolitionist community, the majority of us being black. Um, we make the distinction of what we call chattel slavery and chattel simply means property where you could be the property of an individual. But I would say that after the passage and ratification of the 13th Amendment, which just transformed it from one form of slavery to another form of slavery with certain requirements in order to put someone um, into slavery, that that's still chattel slavery because once you are in a county jail, you become what? The property of that jail. Once you're in a prison, in a state prison, you become the property. Of, so chattel slavery still exists. It's just that while black people are still primarily the number one targets for modern day slavery it now includes you know all ethnicities all backgrounds all nationalities national origins and a lot of people don't know that but that's one thing that if i was to negotiate a reparations package with the u.s government and not just the u.s government um but starting with them um the first thing i would ask is that uh, slavery be abolished and right now there is legislation in the u.s congress to uh re get rid of that travesty of a loophole that is in the 13th amendment right that should be number one on the list actually in slavery reparations start there you know I'm, I, I, I'm not just concerned about what happened to my ancestors. I'm concerned about what's happening to all people right now. And that should be number one on the list. But when we're talking specifically about repairing the harm that was done to African descendant people by in the United States, um, the descendants of American victims of slavery, not people from the Caribbean. Um, actually, our brain will play some news clips in just a bit because those people are fighting the UK, the, the British crown. No matter what they call themselves, uh, suing them for reparations. So them people fighting their own fight. But there is some solidarity in the diaspora of people uh, uh, from the United States and the Caribbean lending, um, participating in, in think tanks, coming up with strategies to help each other. And that's the way it should be. But when it comes to cutting a check or any form that reparation comes in from the United States should be only for American descendants of victim or not just slavery because some people want to say which i think i just dispelled that myth some people want to say nobody allows a, a slave today and there's no slave owners but oh contraire you can purchase you can purchase your piece of the modern day prison plantations you know uh, these private prison companies are traded on the stock and they're doing great man they're doing great housing all these migrants fleeing the instability the cia and other agencies created in their home countries toppling their governments, preventing them from getting Medicare for all and, and, and socialist policies like that. 
um yeah they are making a killing and have been for quite some time enslaving migrants and putting them everybody's getting put to work i don't know why people think it and even if they weren't put to work people still profiting just off of them occupying a bed to use that industry uh lingo one of the corporations got to deal with the louisiana of uh, the state of louisiana which by the way incarcerates seven times more people than the entire country of china but we're told that china is so dictatorial and so oppressive and how is it one state in the united states has seven times the uh prison population okay so it, 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 anyway, that's what i'm talking about i'm talking about reparations that is old and we can talk about by who and I, i've even had some people come at me and some of the other content i posted on the, along the lines of reparations uh, where they was like i'll avoid paying taxes but i'll become a tax dodger just to keep you from getting reparations really really is that how you really feel why you ain't dodging these taxes then on this huge military budget and all this money that's going out overseas trillions of dollars being doled out so so that uh, these other countries can provide these social programs for their people we fund nato the so-called army that's supposed to t protect Europe from the Russians as if the Russians is out here like Vikings of old trying to conquer people. That's a whole myth that a narrative created to justify this tremendous spending that we do on the military. Making defense contractors uh, wealthy and those who invest in such uh, stocks. So, but they have health care for all. They have a uh, tuition free college, but you ain't willing to dodge paying taxes for it going out the door to these other countries but you would become a tax dodger and, and risk going to jail just to keep a black man from getting reparations something he's old there ain't no giveaway and it's not just for slavery it's for jim crow it's from on you know the fact that only three percent of african-american citizens of this country own any real property paying property taxes on it only three percent it was way more than that and you know what happened to it it got stolen it got stolen. The raising of property taxes on people who are already poor. These are people just coming out of out of, of that period of slavery after the Civil War. Able to get some some land, purchase some land, and then what, what happens? You raise the property taxes to where they can't afford them, and, and then you just take the property. And this is true of any so-called property owner today in the United States. Try not paying your property taxes, and then we'll see how much you own, how much property you own. Um, I invited uh, to come up. Um, what's on your mind on the subject of reparations? That's what I'm talking about to you. You have something to say? I think you've tried to come up before um, and you're not really contributing to the conversation. All right, I appreciate you dropping off. Let me check the guest panel. Y'all know I'm still learning over here on, on TikTok. Um, let me check some of the comments. See if we got anybody. How can reparations be paid? Let's, let's, uh, and, well, actually the Federal Reserve can print up dollars there. I mean, shit. They printed up a whole bunch of dollars for, um, what was in the news, um, here recently. Um, those stimmies, those stimulus checks that Americans got to save the United States economy so that you'll have some money to spend at the retailers because capitalism only works if people consume it. And if people couldn't consume, I mean, make means to um, get funds to spend, then capitalism collapses. So just like how they just wrote them checks that Donald Trump signed, Donald Trump can sign a check for reparations. They can just print money. They do it all the time. How are we paying for the war on, on um, Gaza? How are we paying for that? Do we ask those questions? How can we pay for that? How, how can we keep paying to arm Ukraine? How are we paying for that? Where that money come from? So I, I don't think it's a question of how can the United States, one of the things they could do is go after some of these corporations. And um, I actually looked that up, you know, cause I don't think it should entirely just be the government I was thinking about the concept, like going back to what the person said about reparations. Um, um, what did he say? He ain't going to pay for it. Well, you know what? It, you ain't got to pay for it. You probably ain't got no money anyway. You know, but again, they take money out your, your weekly earnings every week, just like everybody else. All right. So let's let's not pretend like you have options. All right. So but 
There are a bunch of corporations still in existence or have been absorbed by other corporations that directly profited from the enslavement of black people. The descendants of, of American victims of slavery. They're still around. Let me see if I can pull up that, that research um, right quick. But again, if anybody wants to come up, uh, I'm more than welcome. If, if you educated, if you've done any studies, if you have any questions, uh, you can come on up. But um, while, first, let's do this. Let's, let's um, listen to our, um, and I'm talking to my, the African diaspora right now specifically. Uh, let's let's listen to some of the news on reparations and then ask yourself uh, why is it there any of this news being brought up in US media? Why isn't part of this presidential election? Why isn't reparations? Because neither of the two major party candidates support reparations. And to me, as a, a, a person, if we want to talk about issues, yes, I support social programs that lift all boats, like healthcare for all, free college tuition, and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, let me pull this up. Reparations news. Reparations news. I support th those programs, but I'm talking about something that's old. My mother is still alive. I'm 57. I was born during Jim Crow. Just after the passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, I did attend a segregated school, then put through the trauma of integrating schools in Detroit. It's all, all traumatizing, but she's still alive. My mom was born in 48. She's still alive. She's a victim of Jim Crow. So reparations ain't just for the pre-1865 the, um, um, pre slavery, it's for the mistreatment, the failure to enforce their civil rights. It was a brief period during Reconstruction where black people had uh, their rights respected like everybody else. The federal government under Ulysses S. Grant, that president, former Union gen General, Army General, um, enforced their rights and prosecuted uh, white people for, for uh, you know, depriving black people of their rights. But then soon after him, um, the end of Reconstruction, man, it was just, it was just, uh, what do they call it? It was open season on black people. And that includes taking their lives, stealing their property, robbing them of their inheritance, um, legalized uh, pay disparities, just a uh, man. So it ain't just, and there are people still alive that suffered through all of that, being excluded from the New Deal of Roosevelt. Um, you know, the welfare for white people being excluded from not being able to homestead on land, even though that was stolen property. Mostly, we know, but still, the act of discrimination. It's not just for slavery. And then let's not pretend like like uh, the Civil War was all that long ago. Just a little over 150 years ago. So that that's like what? A lifetime and a half, maybe? That's not the distant uh past in um these institutions. But let's listen to some news. Uh from three days ago. We got some news from two days ago. They might be reporting on the same stories, uh grant you. But there is some news on reparations coming out the UK. And as I was saying to uh the descendants of victims of slavery here in the United States, especially if you're in my generation, Generation X, on down to the millennials and all of that. If we if we're going to allow the Democrats to just take reparations off the table, shove it not even at the back of the bus. Hell, they didn't throw it off the bus. How can you justify continuing to throw your support behind them when they don't they don't support you? They don't support your parents. And it's just ridiculous. The only party I see is the Green Party right now that's supporting reparations, along with social programs that lift all boats. I mean, if you keep giving your vote to somebody and they never give you any support, then um, that says something about you. So what does that say about us collectively? Not talking about just one generation. If you're Generation X on down, why have we let this issue die? Why have we kept settling decade after decade, decade after decade for crumbs that, that don't go anywhere towards repairing the harm that has been done and being done presently to our communities. It make no sense, but hey, good to see the brothers and the sisters across the across the pond, as they say, fighting for reparations. Um, let's pull up this from Sky News, let some of these ads. I'm a, I just did a YouTube uh, search. The Commonwealth dark history, the transatlantic slave trade hung heavy over this meeting of leaders. Impossible to ignore for the UK Prime Minister. Let me first be clear that the slave trade, slave practice, 
was abhorrent. And it's very important that we start from there. In the two days we've been here, um, none of the discussions have been about money. Um, our position is very, very clear uh, in relation to that. There are growing calls for the UK to pay reparations to Commonwealth countries for its role in slavery hundreds of years ago. In Brixton, London, most seem to agree, like Gino from ex Commonwealth. Yeah. Uh, was had out of the North countries and uh, certainly there's a lot of definitely to make sense to have some sort of reparations. And Ebony, who says reparations should be more than symbolic. I agree that I guess there should be some sort of reparations, but I feel like we need to give reparations in the modern day context. Others recognised a need to help, but questioned how. We should be paying something to help Commonwealth countries, not necessarily for reparations for slavery, because otherwise, how far do you want to get back? An ideal early word, but I think ultimately address issues at home before you make it look broad. An agreement was made in the Caribbean by the Commonwealth heads of government to start a conversation, but not all think it's the right direction. When you look at the record properly, there's very little that justifies the idea that UK, France, so on, should be paying reparations to former colonies, particularly in the case of the Caribbean and the UK, where in reality, after slavery, the Caribbean had a substantial amount of benefit from the UK in growth economy, society, and people. The UK government's position is not to pay. MP Bell Ribeiro Addy says there are misunderstandings over money. No one's saying, empty the coffers, empty out 18 trillion pounds today. That's definitely not it. I understand why people are scared about it, but that's why we're taking the time to talk about it so much so that people have a better understanding and understand that in the end, it's not meant to disadvantage any one country. In fact, for a country like ours, I think effectively it will benefit it. For now, the conversation's begun. With more meetings next year, it's clear history will not be ignored. So I don't understand why these people will keep talking about the institution of slavery like it's a thing of the past. Again, I get it. I'm a new abolitionist. I'm a new abolitionist. I know everybody doesn't recognize the United States, nor many of the majority of the states that make up the United States. Then not about slavery, y'all. Read the fine print within these constitutions. Reading comprehension is fundamental. They say reading is fundamental, but just being able to identify words and not comprehend when it's, what a string of those words say, um, that's a form of illiteracy, in, in my opinion. And so you heard that white woman saying, well, how far do you want to go back? Well, we ain't got to go back that far. Actually, we can just go 150 years. We can go that far back. But again, it ain't just for slavery, it's for the discrimination. And then in terms of the UK, you, you owe reparations to the indigenous people of them islands, not just the victims that you brought in from Africa. And then you had the one black guy sitting up there saying well they brought capitalism to that's basically what he was saying and created these economies yeah still exploiting the former victims of, of slavery uh, of their descendants exploiting their labor hell everybody today you know i did expand i used to be a very um strict person when it came to defining slavery but then after reading the u.n human rights charter which eleanor roosevelt had a big hand in helping to establish shout out to her um her husband was a racist though um again black people were excluded from the new deal but when i read the human rights declaration uh section on slavery it said it uh, uh, abolishes all forms of slavery and that's when i started to consider you know slavery comes in different forms different forms so um there's a reason why we call like let's say for example north carolina's minimum wage seven dollars and 25 cents i think it is been over 20 years been that over 20 years that's slave wages in today's economy that's slave wage. that's exploitation of labor so that is a form of slavery but i'm on here to talk about reparations i'm on here to talk about reparations oh uh, let me pull up my research and let me see if any guests want to come up talk about reparations oh uh, let me pull up my research and let me see if any guests want to come up i see we the messages i'm trying to keep up with y'all again it's, it's easier to come on up and speak your piece than than writing i'm on this little old phone need some glasses that the uh va veterans hospital owe me that they, they saying i can't get the next uh, donald trump also have a lot it. um let's read this okay let's rule out american taxpayers let's rule them out as on reparations and we're just talking right now monetary reparations there are other forms of reparation it doesn't have to be a check although i did interview once the um you can check the archives on blacktalkradionetwork.com please support make a donation to support independent black media um you can make a secure donation there or on through any other platforms who have various means to support content creators yeah do that i think i set a goal here on um tiktok for three hearts can i get three hearts for the content can i get three hearts but yeah, there are other other than monetary forms of reparations that you can do. 
that I really want to see everybody get. And that's why I want to narrow it down to, let's call it a stimulus check. But there are a significant number of U.S. corporations that have historic ties to slavery or absorb com companies that profited from slavery, but an exact number is difficult to pinpoint. And see, here's the thing. The H.R. 40 bill sitting up there in Congress, oh, sure, the Democrats when Trump was last president, oh, yeah, they scheduled some H.R. 40 hearings so that the Republicans can show how united they are in being against it. But then since Joe Biden became president, have you seen any more hearings? Did, is anybody talking about it? Has there been any work to advance H.R. 40? And H.R. 40 is just to study it, to study these things like which of these corporations still in existence have absorbed companies that profited from slavery? Let's pinpoint that exact number. Some major financial institutions, insurance companies, and railroads either directly profited from slavery or inherited wealth that originated in slave economies. Research has shown, I'm about to name some names, y'all. And uh, I get, sometimes I get off track, y'all. I was talking about billionaire Bob Johnson, who I interviewed um, few years ago you can find the podcast on black talk radio network.com he came up with a one trillion dollar plan to pay those qualified as the uh, uh african american descendants of slavery here um victims of slavery one trillion hell that's that's the damn pentagon's budget uh yearly here lately hey how about this how about stop spending trillions of U.S. tax dollar funds to prop up the defense industry and make their companies rich and their stockholders rich and causing so much instability around the world because if there's no war, there's no profit. And how about, hell, we'll put you on a two-year plan. 500 million set aside for reparations one year, the other 500 the next year. How about that? Would you rather would you rather instead of repairing your fellow citizens from 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 undeniable harm? Or would you rather to keep funding these unnecessary wars that one day you might have to go participate in and get maimed and unalived? But OK, but let's name some names because some of these people are still around and still up to no good. Remember, slavery has never been abolished yet. They are private uh, corporations. They have major if they're not housing prisoners, the modern day victim of slavery today. If they're not housing them directly, they have some kind of company that is got a contract with the state prisons to provide crappy services and get paid. But let, let's go ahead and name some names of research that's already been done. Research has shown that companies like J.P. Morgan Chase, they still around. Aetna, you'll see these companies uh, advertising on the Super Bowl paying how much money per commercial for the Super Bowl? So they got the money, y'all. They can come up easily with the, with the $1 trillion between them. So we got Aetna, that's the little duck, right? Quack, quack. New York Life. Wachovia, which is part of, now part of Wells Fargo, which Wells Fargo was actually founded on the other side of, of the 13th Amendment, pre-1865 slavery, okay? And let's see, several major U.S. railroads were connected to slavery. In some cases, banks and insurance companies directly insured enslaved people or provided financial services that supported the slave trade. During the 19th century, U.S. economic expansion was closely tied to industries such as cotton and sugar, which relied heavily on enslaved labor. And again, after the Civil War, when, when Lincoln and the Republican Party cut a deal, with the defeated, they didn't even have to cut a deal with the Confederate States of America. Realize this, y'all. They ain't had to cut a deal. They have been totally defeated, annihilated, totally subjugated, right? But Lincoln, I guess, in order, I'm not even going to speculate on that man, crazy, man, that, uh, racist man's thinking. But Lincoln cut a deal with them, which was the 13th Amendment, which basically was an agreement between wealthy, racist white men that, listen, we're going to allow you to keep practicing slavery, but under these conditions, those conditions are you first got to convict them of a crime. Then after you convict them of a crime, you can then sentence them to prison, which is basically sentence them to slavery. That's where the railroads come in, y'all. They use eight. Uh, uh, they use what they call convict leasing to build the railroads. Yes, the Chinese immigrants played a major role in, in out west and building the railroads. But African-American men, and I'm sure some women in other roles, but African-American men providing the hard labor, the disposable labor, 
Many of them died out there cutting through mountains and, and, and what have you. So slavery was never abolished. And you oh, railroad companies. Uh, let me see, what else? Several municipalities, including Chicago, San Francisco, and Los Angeles, have asked corporations to disclose historical ties to slavery when they conduct business there. These efforts have revealed connections, but haven't produced a comprehensive list of companies, especially given that many corporations evolved through mergers and acquisitions over the years. But guess what? There's always a paper trail. There's always a paper trail. So I hope that answers your question, um, Jeff. That's how it can be paid. But again, H.R. 40 calls for the study of the issues and the Republicans and Democrats together aren't interested in even studying the issue. So what does that say to me? Why should I invest a vote in either of those parties? They're not doing anything to repair my community. Now, let's say let's get off the monetary the monetary way that you could pay reparations and let's go to how about all of us who are qualified. And you gotta realize that we only 13% of the population, so it's not like it's a lot of us who can prove our lineage back to enslaved individuals who had survivors through all throughout Jim Crow and that, that open period of terrorism. You know, the KKK and all them type of groups was doing after the Civil War and, and all the way up into the 50s and the 60s. Government, uh, state governments, city governments, county governments, the federal government failed to protect us and enforce our civil rights. When this country wouldn't even exist as the USA, if not for us, it would be called the CSA. So there's a number of ways you can, you can afford us reparations like exempting us from taxes. The little bit of us who have held on to, again, remember I said less than 3% of African-Americans own any land in the United States my family being among the minorities and they stolen probably hundreds of acres over the decades through Jim Crow. How about exempting us from property taxes? And if African-Americans buy any land, they will be exempt from property taxes for life and our descendants. Would that bother you? Now, I would go on and, and, and mention things that I support, but I don't want it just for African-Americans. I think we should have uh, uh, health care for all. For all U.S. citizens. And of course, if anyone here is here who's not a U.S. citizen, we want to be humane people and, and treat their wounds as well. There's no reason we can't provide that for everybody improve all our health outcomes, then there wouldn't be any disparities, would there? Like we have now. How about free college tuition for all at public institutions that we already paying for? How about that? So anybody that does, that's against paying reparations, I, I challenge them to come up with a reason, a coherent reason why that isn't rooted in hate. I'm just on here trying to make you think. That's all. Think about things from a different perspectives. Um, here we got one of the uh, typical responses we've heard over the decades. Uh, one million times against reparations. My grandfather never owned any slaves. But guess what, though? I don't know your grandfather or even your great grandfather because a, a lot of these Caucasians came from Europe after the Civil War, y'all. They relatively fresh off the boat stepping into a white identity and then want to come over here talking about our forefathers. Yo, what? Dude, you wasn't even over here during, none of your peoples was here during the American Revolution. Guess who was? Guess who was? So, but your grandfather benefited from the black codes of Jim Crow. He benefited from claiming his white identity and all that that accommodated him. Right? He readily accepted those benefits, right? Hell, he might have a farm, right? Remember, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King was, was before he got unalive with the U.S. government playing the role. He said he was going to Washington, D.C. to get our checks. And he talked about how all this land in the Midwest was given to all of these white immigrants, some of them just fresh off the boat, giving all this money to purchase farming equipment if they didn't know how to farm, giving grants to go to college, tuition-free college, to learn how to farm. So it really, it really is makes no difference 
that your grandfather wasn't here prior to 1865 and he didn't step off of that boat. Let's say the 1940s. Still don't matter. He still got that green, that New Deal from Roosevelt that excluded African Americans. Maybe he served in, in World War II and got the GI Bill that excluded African American GIs. Got them housing loans and all of that. So, um, I'm sorry, but reparations isn't just for the physical enslavement of people. It's also for the harm that came after. The monetary harm, the physical harm, the psychological harm. This is all well documented. Unless your grandfather was out there well, what did they call them on the Freedom Rise? Getting, getting um, people aiming pew pews at him on why he on the bus down here in the South registering black people to vote. You know, he don't. Your grandfather don't get no pass. Your grandfather didn't give his life to uphold liberty and justice for all. Then you know what? Your grandfather benefited from racism, white supremacy. So it, it just, it just. You want money, okay? Why you ain't tell them slavers to do that? And I mean, I have a job. I think, you know, pretty much the majority of working class people have jobs, but then, then we're talking slave wages in most cases. So, um, no, it, it ain't all about money. It's about reparations. Now, as a black follower of Yeshua, which Yeshua was a melanated man, I know you Caucasians, you know, uh, like to call him Jesus and what have you, um, but you claim to be Christians. They claim this is a Christian nation and the Bible talks about reparations. So it's biblical. It's biblical. It's, this country has paid reparations to Japanese Americans. They have even paid reparations to Jewish Americans. What's that about? Were you opposed to reparations with your grandpappy out there with a picket sign saying, get a job, Jews, if you want money? Yeah, I'm not even going to entertain ignorance because these people are, are ignorant. They're not making an argument in good faith. And again, we really don't have to deal with them. All we have to do as the descendants of victims of slavery, as the victims of Jim Crow, the victims of gross civil rights and human rights violations that continue to this day, all we have to do is unite politically and stop giving our votes to the Republican Party, stop giving our votes to the Democratic Party, the only political party, and you have to use the vehicle of politics to get what's owed. All we got to do is exodus from those two parties and go to a party that has reparations as part of its, its platform. We don't have to argue with racist suspects on the internet about what they gonna do or what we should do, they don't matter. Cause at the end of the day, you know, they not the people who control power, the levers of power in this country. So, how long have I been on? I got another creator that wants to come up uh, by hopefully on the topic of reparations. Uh, go ahead, what's your name? And go ahead with your comment. Need a match? I, I don't understand what's going on here. I, I see we got some Zos in the chat room, some more white supremacists in our chat room. Um, I don't I, listen, I'm kind of new to TikTok, bro. So I really don't know how to work it like that, man. I really don't. I don't know what you meant by reps. For those that's just now coming in asking, how's it gonna be paid? Um, I'll post some highlights from this live later. I'll post the entire live actually on blacktalkradionetwork.com. Those questions have, have already been answered. Are you talking monetarily? Uh, the Federal Reserve seems to be able to print up crispy Benjamins whenever uh, they get ready. Okay, see if we can get, uh, I have four. What do you got to say? What do you got to say? Look like we got some of our melanated brothers and sisters joining us from other parts of the non-white world, uh, but I'm talking reparations tonight. What's on your mind? Okay. No, thank you. I don't know anything about match invites and, and things of that nature. I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, decline on that. All right, so I've been going, what, for about an hour. I'm going to go ahead and end the live. 
uh, like, follow, share me, share um, the account on TikTok, or you can follow Black Talk Radio Network on Facebook. Uh, we even got a channel what, at Black Talk Radio on Twitter, although I just really started posting there. I really don't like that platform and environment over there. Um, but again, I am in the media business and I do need to distribute stuff. And uh, yeah, it's election time. So that said, peace and blessings to all. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Bye. Have a good day.